Merry Hello. Christmas. Merry Christmas. What? <laughs> what? Good. Hey everyone, welcome to our live. Uh, when you get here, let us know. Say hello. How are you? And we will get going right away mm -hmm. on this caroling card funness. Caroling card. Caroling, caroling card. card. Caroling card. So as you come in, say hello, and we'll get going here in a quick sec. Mm -hmm. There it is. I'll come to us first. <gasps> hello. Hi, everybody. Jill, Nancy, Sharon, and Jill, let's see, Sarah. Yep, yep, yep. Look at all you guys. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, got to move that down just real quick so I can find YouTube. There's YouTube. Renee, Lara, uh, Lori, Melinda, Barbara, Sharon, Georgia, Libby, Linda, Deborah, Lisa, Tiffany, Carol, Lawrence. Hello, Laura. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My lady. Tindaloo. Hello. Beth and Kathy, Kathy Hine, Don, and Nancy on this side too. <laughs> Got you both sides. If you guys have any problems on Facebook, um, you can jump over to YouTube. Hey everyone, so welcome. Um, so this is on our Ken's Creations mm -hmm. channel. We go live here every Tuesday, so if you are not either liking our page or subscribing to YouTube, make sure to do that now. We are monitoring comments on both YouTube and Facebook. Mm -hmm. However, the difference is on Facebook, we have not given you any of the links. So if you want specific links or coupon codes to what we're using, just put hashtag links and we will make sure to get those for you and get you a list of all the items we've used. Now we do have coupon codes for certain companies, um, so we will let you know those as well. If you're on YouTube, in the description, it has everything you will need, including coupon codes, the whole kit and caboodle. You're welcome on YouTube. You're welcome. Also, if you are on Facebook and um, it's been kind of wonky on Facebook, so if you're on Facebook and it's not going good, jump over to YouTube and it's much better. Yes. All right. I'll even grab that. I'll even grab that. Yes. Last Where's... and not least, I've had a lot of you reach out in this past week asking, what is this Africa thing and how can we support? Um, I don't want to go into great detail because we want to get going on this card, but we are going to Africa on a joint um, effort with Watts of Love to give out lights to um, a lot of uh, people that are in need of lights over there. Uh, I have been taken care of by Chocotour as a designer that they're featuring, but we are paying for Sean out of pocket. So we've done a couple of Chocathons, yes. and we would love it if you want to donate to his cause. We have about another week and a half to two weeks to raise up to 4250 mm -hmm. and I think we're at right around 1100 So in advance, thank you if you decide to donate to that. Thank link you. is down below. All right, so let's dive right into this. So uh, today, I'm so excited. As many of you guys know, when we go live, sometimes you will see a um, young man come in. His name might come in as Simon, or it might be in clips. And he is a wonderfully talented young man that started a YouTube channel when he was very young with his dad and started creating with other people's products. Mm -hmm. And last year at Creativation, he announced his product line, Simon Hurley Create, that's the name of it. It's a joint venture between him and Ranger. He did send me all this product when it first came out and they have a second release that just came out. So I created um, a uh, cart project featuring some of his product and I have heard you guys, Ken, we want card tutorials. Where are your card tutorials? Well, I have to be inspired and I have to say his card set inspired me and I'll tell you why here. Um, and hopefully he will join us and we'll say hello when he comes in. Mm -hmm. um, all of the, the product links that is for his line will go to Ranger. Uh, official store because that is where they've officially released and who I partnered with so um, they might be in other storefronts ie scrapbook.com and Simon says stamps I haven't given you those links uh, just because I'm supporting Simon in this video and they're through Ranger so all right, let's get started. This is the card mm -hmm. we are creating. We will definitely get picture and picture set up. You can see here, look how fun it is. And um, I will be creating a couple more stamp sets with his product. This was a blast to make. I had a ton of fun. We'll walk you through the entire process and get going. I don't need this glass mat right at first, so I'm gonna take it out of the way and we'll bring that back out. Once again, as I, uh, 
can let you know that we do have uh, coupon codes, I will let you know. So the first thing we are gonna do is grab my stamp platform. Okay guys, um, I will, I, <laughs> Sean broke it. Look at this. You I didn't know I broke that. You did because you cranked down my table, but we won't get into it. Oh. Um, anyways, uh, if you want this, get this now. The smaller one is already out of stock. These are going away. These are only going to be available outside the United States. Um, so there's a few left of these on Amazon. So if you like them, I would suggest grabbing them. Um, and I'm going to grab some of this. This is Simon Hurley Create Stark White Cardstock. Mm -hmm. The reason I love this cardstock is it's 110 pounds. I love 110 pound cardstock. Mm -hmm. It's also the same as Gina K cardstock. Um, so I will be using this. But I am going to cut this down a little bit. Now, here is my uh, cutter pillar pro i have recently combined efforts with this company which is cutter pillar pro you'll go to simplehuman.com and if you use coupon code ken20 k-e-n 20 you'll get 20 percent off your whole order there specifically this i think this is at 97 dollars, and so 20 percent off i forget how much that'll bring it down to um but it's a great thing has a light which i use all the time and self-sharpening blade. We're gonna cut this at six inches. And we'll be using that throughout the little funness here. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna grab is my stamp platform. Do, 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 do. And these come with some pretty strong magnets, which we want. And because this is a pretty pretty thick piece of cardstock mm -hmm. and my house has dogs and lots of other stuff, it attracts static electricity. This is just an embossing buddy. All it is really is a little pouch full of talc powder or baby powder. And I just poof it everywhere and just rub it. This will get rid of your static electricity. There's other brands out there. This is just the one that I've had for years. Some people make their own too. Some people make their own. I've never had to replace this, never had to refill it. So I really mm -hmm. like it. All right, the first stamp set we are using, you guys, it's so cute. It is called the Caroling Squad. Here it is. And it has a lot of kind of Christmassy themed stamps. So you have these cute little guys here that are all singing together. You have the one that we use, the singing guy. Um, the Christmas tree, great sentiments, Merry Christmas, Silent Night, Holy Night, Jingle Bell, Someone Smells. I forgot the rest of the lyrics, Merry Christmas, Sending Carol Cheer and Hugs for All Year. Wolf, that means Merry Christmas in Dog. Um, the reason I like Simon's stamp sets is um, as a young man in crafting when I started out, there wasn't a lot of options for teenage boys either for me to create with or to create with myself. And I really like his stamps because they kind of have that perspective. So for me, I really like them. Um, all of his stamp sets kind of have this uh, look to them. So if you have, you know, I'd say anywhere between eight and 25 year old guys, I think these cards aren't so, the illustrations aren't so cute. They're cute, but they're not cute like really like girly cute. Girly cute, it's boily, it's yeah, cute. it's cool. I, I like the look of them and stuff. So um, that is what we're gonna be using. And we're using the tree. Some people say it kind of reminds them of uh, Charlie Brown. It kind of does. The the guy with his little mouth wide open and the fa la 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 la. And we're just gonna set these. Now on the stamp platform, you wanna make sure there's one side that says clear, one side that says rubber. We wanna make sure the clear side is facing up and it will cling onto our stamps. We can lift that. Since we've kind of messed with the pip fur, I'm gonna go ahead and boop, 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 again. All right, and I'm using Brutus Monroe Embossing Ink. This is my go-to for embossing ink and powder. Mm -hmm. I do have a coupon code with Brutus Monroe. It is in the links. We can get you that on Facebook. Um, it's KK15, gets you 15% off his store. Um, so Brutus Monroe, I've known them for a while. The owner of that, Christopher Allen, and I go back to our cricket early days. So thank you for the coupon code. Somebody's asking, is there a coordinating uh, die, 
dice it with a. You know, I do not believe there is. I will say, um, I, I personally um, liked cutting these out because the stamp set is very, um, I don't want to say kiddish. It's not kiddish, but it has that kid feel to it. I wanted to make sure the cut wasn't a perfect fourth of a line around like the offset. Mm -hmm. To me, it was very important to kind of get that element of, it looks like a little kid cut it out. So I'm going to be hand cutting these. And I don't believe there's a die set, but these are really easy to cut around. I Hi, Simon. Any. Welcome. Hi, Simon. There he is. So we are just going to stamp this. And I always check in the light to see if we got a good stamp image. You'll be able to tell. You can see it right there in the light. See how you see that little image? That means it was a good, successful stamp, and we are successfully happy. Aren't we, Sean? Yes, we're very. We are very happy. So I'm going to grab this, you guys. This is just a cheapy piece of copier paper. Oh, hi, Simon. Sorry. I just now <laughs> caught on to that. Yes, yeah, Simon's here. Um, <laughs> he couldn't find, I guess he couldn't find us off, offhand, but he says. So I am just using the Raven Black Embossing Powder. Now, this is an ultra fine embossing powder, um, which is why I like it. And we are just going to make sure we have a good amount. And you can flake it off, kind of hit it. You don't want to hit it too hard, but. And if you do have any on here that you are going to be using, grab a paintbrush. This we really don't have, but I did miss a little corner of that tree, so we'll add that. And I really like a fine embossing powder because especially on this stamp set, um, it's kind of hard to tell in the picture, but I'll bring it up close here. This little guy has freckles at the top of his cheeks. cheeks. And if you um, don't have a really fine embossing powder, sometimes those can get a little lost. I will say though, if you are using polymer stamps with embossing powder, not to press on your stamps too hard in a stamp platform, it can smush your polymer stamps out, which won't give you a very detailed. I personally am a red rubber stamp kind of guy, um, but uh, the, this works fine. It's just you want to not press too hard on detailed areas. All right. We are gonna grab this. Now you guys, this is new but not new. Um, you all know me by now that I use the Wagner heat set tool. Do you mm -hmm. wanna grab it real quick, Sean? Mm -hmm. And I was notified, sorry, the camera's gonna shake while I plug this in, I apologize, um, that it is no longer available. Nope. It is, it's just been updated. So this is the old style, which I've always loved. Here it is. Yep. And they've updated to this look, which I'm obsessed with. Why? couple reasons number one it has a two-way switch so it has one which is um 400 degrees i think or so and then the next one's 700 degrees i would have to look Double check. Yeah. um it also has this which i really love it's a stand that can be stored this way it can be stored that way you can hold it like this you can hold it like a bench like too. this you can hold it like this. So it's a lot more versatile. It, this has been a great heat tool. I loved it. But as soon as I saw the updated design, I had to get it. So we are going to start off on the, there's a, a one and a two. One and a two. We're going to start off with the one. Just takes a second to heat up. I personally like using it this way, but you can use it any way you like. You can even hold it right at the end as a pencil. Yeah, you can hold it just like that if you want. So. And we're going to see it go from a powder to a solid here. Christopher likes to call his Wagner the devil heat gun. <laughs> Too funny. So I'm going to turn this up now, get a little hotter. And so I do like that because sometimes if you start off at the hot element, you can burn your paper. So this lets you know right away if you're going to burn your paper or not. So I kind of start on that one and then go up to the two. And Sean, how will you know if you got everything? On embossing powder. Um, on embossing powder, as soon as it goes from a dull to a shine, it's done. So what I always recommend before you start doing anything with it is take 
your cardstock up into the light. And I always tell people kind of tilt it and you'll see if you missed any areas. It will be a high gloss and it will be very dull. So always just kind of make sure you hit all the areas. Which I think I got it all, but I'm just double checking here. There we go. What are we looking at? Looking at the name of Simon's paper. Simon's paper is the, it's called Stark White Shot. So then these here are the little, um, the stands and they actually just click right into here. Another thing I like is this. So this here is a, a protection. So like normally if you touch the tip of this on the other one, it, it burns you obviously. This gives you an area to grab it and still not get burned. In fact, you can still see where I'm scarred where the old one burned me yep. because of that. Yeah, some, do, some people do heat from behind. They do. And it's kind of fun to see it that way too. All right, so we're gonna let that chillax um, and do its thing. And I'm gonna grab this. So this here is the Simon Hurley, and I love the stamp set. So this is called the Piano Recital. And what I love is they were smart enough to give it to us as a whole sheet, but also they've split it up to where you can break this up into three separate stamps if you want to. So this way, if you just want to create a border, you don't have to mask it. Um, if you want to just, you want to separate it to create a strip down the middle, you have that option. Um, I love cutting up my stamps, but I know a lot of people in the world are not like me and they do not want to cut up their stamps. So this gives you the option to say, hey, it's okay if your stamps are a little um, broken up. It gives you basically the option to do different stuff with your stamps, which is great. So first I'm gonna pull off these guys and put right back in here. I also like that they've taken the extra step and given us a fold here on the stamps. It's something simple, all it is is a, a sticker that combines the back and the front, but I always lose my backing. So this always has the backing already on it. Awesome. Which is nothing like earth shattering, but in my world, it's huge. Okay. So this guy is going to end up being six by six. So I'm going to grab a new stark white paper and do a full sheet because I'll show you why here in a sec. Now, what we're going to do on this is we're going to put it in our stamp platform. Now remember stamp platform has a rubber side mm -hmm. and a clear side. And so since we're using the rubber side right there, it says rubber, we want to make sure it's facing up. Now I can't stress enough, if you love this stamp set, or if you love the stamp platform, you need to get it now because they will not be available in the United States after a certain point. And I've already kind of found a new one but that I'll be using, but I still, this is my go-to. All right, so we're gonna clean that up right here. You can see it right here. Do, do, do. And I'm gonna grab just some embossing ink again so just regular this is the Brutus Monroe embossing ink and you know what hmm. I just now remembered I do I'm not using stark white so good thing I caught that <laughs> I'm actually using um, fun stampers journey butter stuff butter cream this guy here so fun stampers journey used to be direct sales now they are at um, Spellbinders, so you can still buy all of their products. And the reason I'm using this versus white is I'm going for an old sheet of music. And even though it's not that much difference, there is a difference to it. And I want the white to really shine. So hi Sage. We are going to stamp this again. So just using the Brutus Monroe embossing ink. Hi Miss Allie. There we go. And we are going to stamp this. Okay. And once again, you'll know you got a good stamp because it will have the pattern in it kind of wet looking. Mm -hmm. You can see it right there. We're going to put that off to the side. I'm going to just um, wipe down. Can I have a towel from Shh. under here, Shoni? Yeah. Thank you. Just gonna wipe down my stamp. You can use a terry cloth stamp, or I mean a terry cloth, 
wipe. Um, I choose not to use Windex wipes or baby wipes because I have had a few of my stamp sets, especially on red rubber, dry on me. Photopolymer, it's a completely different story. Um, I use that all the time, but on my red rubber mounted, I will just use a towel. Put that back in it. Yes, Ken lost more weight. You're gonna dis have. you're gonna disappear. I am at my all time low in a long time. Mm -hmm. So I am three pounds away from my goal by my birthday, and then after that, I have 15 more pounds that I want to lose. So we'll see, right? Yep. Okay. So we have this here. So what are we gonna do with this? We are going to have some fun with pan pastels. If you guys have never used pan pastels, they are a lot of fun. Here's what they look like. And um, pan off. pastels basically are a very, very, very fine pigment dust that basically, you know, they're really rich but soft and you use something like this. There's different applicators and you just wanna have a piece of paper towel. You can clean it off and you can see some colors coming off. But what's cool is it won't contaminate so we can add a couple of different colors here mm -hmm. I'm gonna actually just focus on the gold which is right here and just a little bit of this copper color so here are the two I'm using and we're just gonna grab a little bit of the gold first and we're gonna dab it in some areas at first so just like so and then we can clean it off. And we're gonna grab some of this. I think this is like a rust or a copper. I'm not sure what the, I'll look in the back really quick what the name is. I'll look for you. Thanks. Now you look. Burnt Sienna. Okay, we're gonna clean off the tip again. And this time we're gonna load this guy up with this gold and kind of now do a circle motion. And you'll see all those music notes pop and you're gonna get a little bit of that color um, in the background of the card, but it really makes them pop, and I'll show you the shimmer. Now, once you put this pan pastel on here, uh, you don't have to worry about this being sticky anymore, that, that color, because it's now And you can do different layers. We want to get that really nice gold shine here. So we're mm -hmm. just going to kind of load that up. And then I'm going to put this off to the side here. And once again, you just take a paper towel and clean it off. So what's really cool about this stuff is once you've taken a paper towel and kind of brushed it off, even on a white piece of cardstock, you can see here, this is still blue. I'm not going to get any residue because I've cleaned it off. Now on this side, I haven't cleaned it fully, so I got a little residue. So you just keep going until there's no residue left and see, it doesn't transfer, which is really cool. All right, so we are done with this. Be very careful not to drop these. Um, they are very, very fine powder, almost compressed in here. And I dropped my silver and it's all kind of, you can see it looks like little rocks now. It will still work, mm -hmm. but it's just a little, a little bit more convoluted to play with. Yes. All right. So this one is going, we're going to cut some stuff now. Aren't you excited, Sean? Always excited for cutting. So I'm grabbing some of Gina K's premium cardstock. This is probably one of my go-to cardstocks for black. Once again, just because of the weight. I am all about the weight of cardstock. And um, both this and Simon have a heavier cardstock at 80, well, between 100 and 110. So this guy is going to get cut at 5.75 on my Cutter Pillar Pro here. No, I lied to you. Six. I apologize. Six inches on this guy. We're doing a square card, so six by six. By six. Okay. This one then is going to get cut at 5.75. Now, what I love about the Cutter Pillar Pro is it has a light. You can see it here. Tilt it a little bit. 
So here I'll show it with it off. There it's off, on. And so when you're lining up a stamp that you just did, you can actually see where the line from the stamp set. So like this one, I cut kind of at an angle. Or I mean, I stamped at an angle, but this way I know I'm getting all of it. And this one we want at five and a quarter. So 5.75. Three quarters. Or thank you, Sean, three quarters. Thank you. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. We're gonna cut this one right about. And then 5.75. There we go. All right, now we get to have a little bit of fun with this card. So as I said earlier, the pan pastel, the gold is got a nice reflection to it. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. Let me bring it up close. See how it gives it a nice almost foil look there. It's just gorgeous. Well, we're gonna destroy Gorge. that. <laughs> we're gonna destroy it. We're gonna destroy it. So the first thing you're gonna do is um, possibly do this outside. You do mm -hmm. not want to, if you have smoke alarms, I do not recommend turning those smoke alarms off to do this. So, um, but ours didn't go off last time. So we're going to hope they don't go off this time. And what we're doing is this is beautiful. We could use it just like this if you wanted to, but I wanted more of a, um, old piece, up, yeah, an, an old, old piece, piece of music. Of music. Yeah. So we're going to take a lighter. If you are under the age of 18, please ask for parent supervision. And we're going to just light at certain points in the card. And you'll actually see it start to burn. And it will have a slow burn just like that. And you can just take your finger and it will start to. And you can do it as much or as little as you want. So we'll do bigger chunks and let it burn a little bit. And literally just like that. Flick it away. So I'm going to do that around the card. And while I do this, Sean can see if there's any questions. Nothing yet so far. Everybody's just in awe. Oh my God, I'm excited and scared, says Mr. Simon. So the nice thing too on this, it when you do this with your hand, you get you'll soot. get a little bit of soot and you can use that on the edge. We're mm -hmm. actually going to add a little bit more distressing with some of Simon's inks. We're going to use Wolf and Gur, which are basically his brown and black, but you can use it with a little bit of your... Um, the set on your finger. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say is it's not very hot. You just don't want it to actually catch on fire. You want it to go to a essentially a what would you call that? An amber. Amber. Yeah. Yeah. A little amberage. Do not blow on it. So a lot of people will say, "Oh, blow it out. It'll it will actually make it continue continue, continue burning, burning in, and you'll get a bigger chunk. Which, if that's what you want, perfect." But basically, you want to get rid of those ambers or it will slowly keep burning on you. I'm in awe. So if you want to keep let it going, great. You can see right there it's still going. Just take your finger and... And I did bring out my gloss mat here so you can see. But see how that soot's coming out too? That's just what we want. You could, Carol, you could use a burning tool if you have one. We don't have one, so this is the next best thing. I like fire. Fire, fire. Because it makes it smell like a forest <laughs> fire. It makes it smell like a forest fire in here, mm -hmm. which I love. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. We got some good distressing you can see there. I'm going to clean up my glass mat, which um, I'm obsessed with. So if you have not bought one of these, I gave you the link to Amazon on this. This thing is pretty sweet. All right. So, Sean can show you the effect there really quick. I'm going to wipe this down. We're going to go on to our next effect. Okay, so the next effect is we're going to grab the, um, so there is Wolf and Gur. So there's, these are two. There's a ton of other different ones, but we're going to start with these. I'm going to start with the Wolf, and literally, I'm just going to go on the edges, and I do kind of almost want a harsh, You'll see here where it gives kind of that stamp pad look, harshness to it, which we want. A lot of people will say, well, don't you want to blend it? No, we want kind of this to look like it's been essentially put through the ringers. Okay, that's all we're going to do right now. We're going to use these in just a sec. And now you're going to take this. 
and crumple it up just yep. like so. Ember, not amber, but ember. E, ember, not A. thank you. Yes. So then once it's crumpled up, you'll notice certain points of your card will start to rip and you want to exaggerate that and let it rip a little bit in there. And it should naturally form some of the rips, but if it doesn't, you can start your own rips just like so. And then we're going to flatten that out again. But you can see now where it looks like it's kind of been crumpled, gives that cool kind of look. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to grab both of these colors again. So you have, um, you have both Gur and Wolf. There is on this glass mat that I just removed. There is this little um, pad over here that can you can watercolor and do all sorts of funness. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna grab just this. This is just a, a daubing tool. And we're gonna start with the Wolf. I'm just going to come over here. And the reason I'm doing it over here is I do want to just take a little bit of it and get it off. Even though it doesn't look like it's getting it off, if I get too much on here, which that's too much, it will be too much of a harsh edge and we don't want that. We want more of a softer edge at first. I'll show you what I mean by this. If I was to do this just like now, I get a little bit of a darker look, which once again, all depends on what you want to do. And we're just going to go between um, this here is Wolf. This is the darker brown. This is Gur, the lighter brown. Simon loves it. So then on those pieces where you exaggerated it, we're going to grab a lot. We're going to load up this dauber with a lot of color. And you're actually going to go inside and really exaggerate that to where people can see that it's been torn there. We're also going to do that anywhere there's a crease. So we can see a crease there. We're just going to crease that up. So we essentially want this to feel and look like it has been put through the ringer. You can even fold it. Now this is very important. As you guys heard, I only use a heavier cardstock and this um, is the reason I like Simon's or Fun Stamper's Journey has 110 uh, Gina K because this, if we were to do this with a non-heavy piece of cardstock, it would tear easy. We want really hard creases like that. And it wouldn't give you that peaking, that peak feeling either. Correct. So we're just going to kind of play around with this and get it a little bit more distressing look. Going between, no rhyme or reason, go between your wolf and your gur because it's just going to mix and give it that kind of, I don't want to say dirty, but it's essentially what it is. So I think that's looking pretty Let's accentuate right here. Okay, so I'm liking that. These are going to go back on. And the next thing that we are going to grab to add a little bit more distressing to this are these bad boys. So these are Fun Stamper Journey and they're called Silks. And they look like little nail polishes. Mm -hmm. And you'll hear it. There's a little ball activation in there and that's what you want to do is just kind of tap this. And what we're gonna do is take the gold first and spritz it everywhere on the card. A little bit goes a long way. But once again, this is just to give it a little bit more uh, distressing look, you know, just adding layers to it. So there's the gold. We're gonna do the same with our, they call it, I think, bronze, but going to bring out that copper color that we used with the pan pastels. Here we go. And these, um, the metallic ones especially, are going to dry not as intense, a little bit more subtle. You can see in the original card here how there's some bronze right there. At first they look really intense, but then they'll dry a little bit more subtle. So this guy can hang off to the side now mm -hmm. and kind of chillax and I'm just going to grab a baby wipe. That's what I love about this mat is we're just going to clean up and everything just comes right off this glass mat. It is awesome, you guys. <laughs> just like so. And this is actually not a bad price. I think on Amazon when I looked on the link I gave you, it's maybe 30, maybe $38, I think. So we'll come out, this will, this guy will come back out and play with us in a sec. Um, where's the protective sheet for this, Sean? Oh, it's over mm -hmm. there. Perfect, thank you. So the next thing I'm gonna grab is we are 
make sure your hands are really clean because you've, you've been playing with the mediums because we are going to grab our stamps here that have chillaxed and done their thing. And I'm going to grab the Tim Holtz five inch snips. Now I gave you the link to Ranger on these and they're now black, which I'm kind of bummed. I don't have the black, but you know, it is what it is. And we just want to cut out the tree. And the kid, the fall a lot is going to come over here and relax. And I'm going to start with the tree. Once again, on this, you guys, usually I am not a fussy cutter. I will grab my um, brother and, you know, let the machine. The style of these stamps, though, almost warrant kind of a jagged, not perfect cut because they are a little bit more whimsy. They're a little bit more childlike. They're a little bit have more of a rough edge. And I love these stamps about that. That's one of my favorite things about this is it looks like a teenage boy sat in high school and drew them, which very well could have happened. I'm not sure. But I love that effect of these is they're imperfectly perfect. And so that's also how you want your cutting style to be on this. So don't worry. A lot of people are always worried about a perfect edge or a you know quarter offset. And I'm saying even if you accidentally cut into the black part of the stamp, no big deal. Okay. The other thing we're going to do when we color these is because I used embossing powder and we're going to be using alcohol stamps, it will reactivate that. And we want that in this because once again, it's going to give us, first of all, some darkening, but it's also going to give that look of a kid sitting in high school math class, drew these and colored them. And that's the look we're going for. So once again, do not spend a ton of time. Cole's been sitting home with double ear infection, a fever, aches. I'm sorry. I'm glad you can watch us though. And these scissors are really good. Uh, They're serrated even. Yes. I am glad he released some in black though, but mm -hmm. I haven't I bought them yet. Okay, so you can see, not perfect. Really kind of jagged, perfection of what we want. Perfectly Go, imperfect. Goes with the look. Goes with the look. Sorry, I have to get a drink, which is back here because Sean won't let me have my drink near my stuff because After I have a what history of I spilling said. it. Yes. <laughs> and yes, I am addicted to Snapple Diet Mango Ice Tea right mm -hmm. now. All right, so we're gonna take Charlie Brown, I mean this stamp. Just kidding, it's not Charlie Brown, don't sue anyone but it does remind me of Charlie Brown. And I'm glad someone else said that because I was going to say that. And I was like, no, Ranger probably wouldn't want me to say it's Charlie Brown. But it kind of reminds me of the Christmas special when they're all singing. And I just want to look at the stamp and go, wah, 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 wah. Do you know what that is, Sean? Yes, that was uh, Charlie Brown's, um, that's with the, the parents. Teacher. Teacher or I guess all the parents, adults, adults, yeah. Good grief. Good grief, Sean. <laughs> okay, I have to tell you guys, I have been in a craft making slump. And I told Sean, like, I just do not like craft making. But there was something, Simon, about your stamps that woke me out of it. And I don't know if it was the style or just because I don't see other stamps that look like this or what it is. But it... As soon as I got these about, I think we got these last week, didn't we, Sean? Uh, yeah, I think so. And Sean was like, are you paper crafting today? And I was like, yep. yep -er All right, so I'm going to put these off to the side really quick. We are going to cut this out, and I am using a die cutting machine for that. This is the Anna Griffin Impress, which, like its name, I've actually been impressed with this machine. Um, I kind of had high hopes when the cuddlebug got retired, what I was going to replace it with. And so far, this has been my favorite uh, machine to use. And it's got a little bit of a smaller footprint for sure. Um, but I've been pretty impressed with it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I need to grab 
my dies wherever they went. Here they are. So I'm just using an oval stitch die. One's a double stitch, one will be a single stitch. These are Gina K. And I'm purposely not wanting it to be perfect. So the fa la la goes, basically this would be center. And I kind of want it to be a little bit more this closer to this edge because this edge will be kind of hidden behind the tree in this newer card. So see how it's a little bit up and mm -hmm. off to the center? Simon said he did draw this during high school class. See, I told you, that's what it reminded me of. These stamps are exactly <laughs> why I love them. It's because yes. it reminds me of what I did in high school when I was bored of my class. I liked the class, it was different. But if I was bored, I drew all over stuff, little you know things that I would think nobody would ever want to look at. And not saying no one wants to look at these, Simon, but I'm just saying they remind me of what I did in high school and I was like obsessed with them essentially. All right, so we did the white. We're gonna grab a black cardstock, put that here face down, run that through. Barbara, we can't really use our brother scan and cut. Doesn't work too well. No, I said the brother scan and cut too. Oh yeah, that's right. You do have that one. works well. Um, just the, the, the DX, I think, is just a malfunction machine. I just and been so busy, I haven't had time to call brother. Um, but yeah. once again, I kind of want this to be a little off. Good night, Simon. Good night, Simon. Thank you. It's late where he's at. I know it's late where he's at. Okay. And you're welcome. So we are going to... You're welcome. I don't know. Using, you're his, using his stuff. Oh, you're welcome. So we're going to move this bad boy. And so we have our falala, which will essentially... It'll get right here in a second. We'll worry about that later. So now we get a color. Are you Yay. excited? Color, color, color. So I'm using Arteza markers. These are alcohol markers. Now a couple things, um, because I use Simon's paper, it is a little different than Bristol. Bristol paper with my water brush, like a real mm -hmm. water brush marker, um, blend beautifully. But this paper, not that they don't blend beautifully, they were a little bit harsher for me. So the alcohol uh, reacted better with this paper and cardstock. So that's why we're using alcohol. We're gonna start with the tree. Now remember, this is going to reactivate with the embossing um, powder. So basically when alcohol hits it, it reignites the black and you'll see that, no big deal. For the tree, we are gonna use these three colors. I'm using <clears throat> A942, which is olive green. Um, a543 moss green and A5948, which is lime green. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to start with the lime green. And we are just going to take this lime green and color pretty much everywhere. I'll start with it down in the points, but you can actually take this, which is the broader tip, and literally go over this entire thing. Um, and then just fix the spots that you need the finer print uh, because this is essentially, we're flood filling this entire thing. And then we're gonna be using the darker color. So the way I color is the way that the lovely Miss Jennifer from Crafter's Companion at the time when Sarah was pregnant, they had Jennifer um, showing the product on HSN and at um, Creativation. I went up to her one time and I said, I have a hard time coloring and she kind of taught me the rule of thumb that you start with your lightest color and flood fill it, go to your dark color, then go to your medium color, and then finish with your light color again. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm just taking this in the, the, the fine tip in and going into all these tight spaces. Once again, this is kind of the kid sitting in high school and coloring and stuff. So if it's not perfect, that's, I'm not going to say that's what we're going for, but you can definitely use it and be like, when someone says, you didn't color in the lines, you'd be like, oh, that was, Ken, Ken with Ken's creation said that was a whole look. That's what it was in. The Empress has 20% off on HSN. I thought I gave the link. I think it's at $199. I don't know if that's the 20% off price or the regular price. So someone will have to tell me. Okay, so we flood filled it. So we are going to grab a piece of cardstock just to make sure we clean our tips as we go because 
we will be contaminating the color, not contaminating, but you'll see here. So here is the median, or wait. Now I lost my train. Okay, we want moss green, so which is the darkest color. We're gonna take that and literally anytime you see this harsh dark black line of the tree, not the little ornaments, you're going to start coloring with this again. So we're gonna start up here with the fine tip and have it kind of go through. Now you can cover the lights because we are actually going to be um, uh, using stickles on that anyway. So there's a harsh black line here of the tree. You can see it right there. So we're gonna bring that here and bring that harsh line down. And then the next area that does it is right here. There's another little harsh line of that black. So we're gonna go down here. So right now at this point, you're gonna have a harsh line and you're gonna be like, it's not blended, I hate it, that's fine, no big deal. Wash off the tip of your marker, put it away. Then you're gonna grab your medium color, which is olive green, 942. And what we're gonna do on here is we're gonna start in the dark zone and make little circles into the light zone. So just like this, you're basically reigniting the darker color up and blending it down. And we're just gonna color down with this and we're gonna keep coloring with that until you wanna stop. And we're gonna hit that again with the light here in just a sec. So just like that. Once again, we're gonna clean it off. Start up here in the dark zone and make little circles. That's basically mirroring the two if you wanna think of it that way. And now we're just gonna bring down that lighter green. Or the, I guess this is the medium. And we have one more area we're going to do that, which is down here. Let's see. Oh, oh sorry. I'm just going to say you need to come down. And we are going to do circles, incorporating. This is the wedding ceremony of the dark and the medium is they're getting married right now. So you have to make circles because they're dancing. <laughs> First wedding dance. And then bring it down. Okay. We're going to clean off that tip and grab back down to your light color, which is this guy right here, lime green. And this is the one that you definitely want to clean off the tip because it will get dirty again. So just like we did before, we're going to marry the two and then bring it down. So once again, they just got married. So they're making little circles. They're dancing. So you're marrying the light with the medium and then clean off the tip and then just go ahead and bring it down. And that will easily, see, look at that natural blend we have now. I'll bring it up real close for you guys. See how there's no harsh zones. It's nice and blended. So by following this rule that I was taught, I've been very impressed, especially with the Arteza markers. So we're going to, once again, marry the two. There is a coupon code for Arteza. I think it is promo 10. I will have a coupon code for myself back soon. I just need to reach out to them. We have been very busy in Ken's Creations land. Mm -hmm. New employee and training and getting, I hope you guys like, we've been uploading some new videos and it looks like everyone's loving them. So clean off the tip again and we're marrying the two. Mary, 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 Mary. Quite contrary. And bring down the colors. <clears throat> And as much as I love water brush, I do have to say, I do love the vibrancy kind of of this. And because we're going for that high school, sitting in math class, looking, you know, doodling, this is more kind of the colors you would see in like on a kid's notebook or something. Okay, so the base of the tree, we are gonna use, doo -doo -doo -doo. where's my colors? We're using cinnamon. A2491 and Sienna Brown A2494. So we're going to start with the Sienna Brown. We're just going to color in that whole base. And then we're going to grab the cinnamon. I'm going to add some dark elements up here, some at the base of the tree, and right about here. And then take back the 
um, sienna. And there we go. So tree is done up to this point. Let's give you a look. And as this dries, your blending will um, actually look even a little better. So we're gonna put this guy off to the side. And now let's start with our little boy. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, Jazzy. Okay, so the boy's face, his face, his face is going to be used. We're going to use pale peach, 89426, no. right and peach, 89425. So the, the, the sixth one, make sure you are ready to clean off the tip because we are going to be basically doing a lot of coloring on him and it's going to pick up a lot of this embossing power and reignite it, which is fine. There are areas we would shade anyways, but you want to see how it's, there's a little bit of black on there, right there. If you don't constantly, um, can you go entire tighter or is that pretty much as tight? No, I can go tighter. Okay. Um, if you don't constantly do that, that black will take over a lot of your coloring. So we're gonna constantly, after we hit an area, we're going to clean off our marker and it's okay that you've hit the black areas in parts because once again, that is going to be parts that we shade anyways, but you want to clean, clean, clean. Jazzy's making euros. I'm going into her house. I knew you'd say that. Oh, I love euros. You know what, Sean? Mm. I love your heart. Your heart. No, I love your heart. Never mind. See, I try to be nice to you and you don't get me. I got it. I had to keep All right. Thinking. We're going to grab the regular peach color <laughs> and we're going to clean off. And this is essentially anywhere where you hit black, number mm -hmm. one. But number two, this is going to add a little bit more color to him. So we're going to hit his freckle area, freckle area, his whole nose, clean, clean, clean. We're going to hit where his ears come out. So right here and here, because his mouth is nice and open, clean, clean, clean. And we're going to hit a little bit down here. Clean, clean, clean. Grab your pale peach again. And now we're going to remove this blend. So right now you can see there's some pretty harsh lines. So by now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of those harsh lines by taking the pale pink and basically coloring on the outside of where we just put that medium pink. And that will kind of break it down. So I'm going to clean as I go. So on each side of his mouth, same thing. We're going to break that down a little bit here. Right down a little bit. There you go. A little bit on this side. Clean, clean, clean. A little bit on this side. Clean, clean, clean. And a little bit on that side. So his face is all done. We'll bring it up and see how by just doing that, it blended our colors. And so where his nose and freckles are, we have it nice and dark and perfection. Okay, so let's do his tongue. His tongue is going to be done in cherry blossom pink, A489, and blush, A4889. So we'll start with the lighter pink. Clean, clean, clean. That could be a catchphrase, clean, clean, clean. And we're going to do the entire tongue in that color grab the darker color, which is blush pink. And we're going to add the darker color at the bottom of the tongue, just like that. And this one here, you're just going to grab your light pink again, and we're going to just marry the two, just like that. I'm telling you, alcohol Thanks, Pamela. used to scare the crap out of me, I'll be honest, because I can never get it to blend. And these Everblend markers are amazing. I am very happy with them. Shirt is next. We are using tomato red, which is A414, and wine, wine, like I just drank a glass of wine, A415. So let's go ahead and hit his shirt, which is going to be right down here. Thanks, Pamela, for the super chat. Okay, thanks, Pamela. Grab the wine, and we're going to add just some darker red elements around the scarf, 
around kind of his armpit. Be very careful in his armpit though, because if you don't blend it just right, it will look like he is sweating. <laughs> so be very careful. Grab back your tomato red and you're going to marry the darker and the lighter color and bring it down. So marrying it and cleaning the tip, very important if you do not want those harsh lines. You also want to make sure you're doing this on a good piece of cardstock or heavy cardstock, one that won't kill because when you're starting to marry stuff and you make circles like this, if you do not have good cardstock, it'll start killing and you'll get little balls of stuff, which is no bueno. All right, his pant color is A264 and A8272. We have denim blue and again blue. Don't think that was right, but that's okay. That one's the denim, but this one denim. is called, you can tell me what that is. I think it's called a gin. I don't know. I don't know. Is it a gin? I can't. It's too tiny to read. So once again, be very careful coloring <laughs> in his crotch area. It will look like he wet his pants unless you marry him correctly. So I have made that unfortunate mistake after and someone said, why is the person wetting their pants? I said, oh, I just forgot to blend there. So that's embarrassing, huh? And then I chose just to keep it simple and do his pant or his shoes, same blue. And then for his scarf, we're actually using this super duper bright yellow. And the reason why is his scarf has so much of that embossing powder. You need a really, really bright color because um, it won't be very bright on here. And you're going to want to clean this in between every little stroke because if not, it's just going to be black. And I'm not even really coloring, I'm just doing dots. And believe me, you won't even really see it. That's all it is. You're only really gonna see it in person. Even on this one, you can barely see it and it looks almost like a khaki color. All right. If you notice, I waited until now to cut out around his legs. I did that intentionally. And the reason why is his legs, when you cut this out, you've cut out a big support of coloring and it's easy to tear it. So wait until the end, or don't even cut it at all. It's up to you. So there's our little kid. Mm -hmm. Look at him, such a handsome little fella. So we have that, we have our tree. And now we can put together our card, Sean. Yep, it's good. So I am going to uh, make sure my hands are nice and clean because we are working with white here. I'm gonna take a quick drink. Is there any questions or anything, Sean? Mm, nope. Love iced tea. Okay. So first up is, um, hmm. Why don't we first build our base of our card? So we are going to use glitter card stock, which should be here unless I moved it. Where would have I moved? If I was glitter card stock, Sean, where would I be? The black one? Yeah. I don't know. You, you, had, you know, you everything was on the table, and I was doing something, and then I come back, and you moved everything. So I don't know what you did with. I don't believe you. You're gonna have to. I love you, but I don't believe you. Well, guess what? Good thing I have backup of it. It's got to be under something. Okay, so here's my glitter card stock. It's fine, Johnny. I have a ton of it. It's fine. Right. You are completely fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to cut this at six inches. Just like so. And glitter cardstock is hard to fold in half. So I am using this. This is my bone folder, Teflon bone folder that I got at Stamplistic. I am obsessed with it. It's awesome. We're gonna fold it in half. And the reason I love this is normally on glitter cards, especially I get a crease mark or I crack the paper. So what you're gonna do is fold it in half. It'll be kind of curly. You're gonna take this and start it at one end and literally, and look at that. It doesn't flake off anything. It does, I pressed and pressed and pressed. It's white core. You don't see any of the white core. It didn't crack. And look at that crease. It is. I have to admit, this bone folder is pretty life-changing. Okay, so 
we are going to attach this black piece here because I didn't want the glitter cardstock coming through, but I did like the glitter cardstock on the back. So you just need um, your tape runner. Now, I would recommend using a pretty good tape runner. This is the Glue Dot Extra Strong Adhesive because it is going on glitter cardstock. And glitter cardstock, even though this glitter cardstock is built into it, um, into the paper, like it's not going to flake off, it still is hard to stick to. And line it up. Just like so. Ta da! Okay. So now we're going to bring down this guy. Now, uh, remember, we went for this kind of beat up look. Now, you'll see where there's parts of it that's lifted up where we crumpled it. So when you put this on the card, we are going to use black foam tape and you, you, you want to support it under this. So we want this part to be raised. So we're going to put a little piece of black foam tape right here, because if we were to look at the card like this, any part that's raised up, like this is the mountain of the card. This is the valley. This is the mountain. In the mountain, we want a little bit of foam. So when you flip it over anywhere that is indented, like so, there's a mountain here. We're going to put a piece of black foam tape. Make sense? Yep. Okay. So you're just going to follow your mountains. Well, in this case, it's going to be the valleys and support it. And it's okay when we push it down if it's not 100% supported. We are just wanting to make sure that we have those ripples still. Because if we were just to put this on a whole bunch of um, adhesive, we won't get these beautiful, like, you know, you know? I know. You know. You know? Yeah. You know? Yeah, we know. And this is just, I think this is Gina Kay's. I could be wrong, so I apologize if it isn't. Um, and it's the foam tape, black foam tape. Um, when I went to Stamplistics booth, one time I said, God, every time I use foam tape, I'm not happy because you can see it's raised up with foam tape. And she was the one that like opened my eyes like, well, why don't you use black foam? And I was like, what? There's black foam. <laughs> it's so simple, but at the time my mind was blown. All right. So here we are, and all you're going to do is try to put it as much in the center as possible. And you're going to push it down literally with all your hands, and it will naturally start springing back up. And you can see it's not as exaggerated, but you can still see there is valleys and all sorts of stuff. You can, if you want it to be a little bit more exaggerated, you can go back and kind of pull it up in spots and exaggerate those and... You do you, boo, if you want to. I don't know. That's what all the cool kids say. All right, so we have a kind of crumpled up piece of paper. We're done. See you later. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sean doesn't find me funny sometimes, guys. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm typing. So our fa la 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 la, in the original one, I had it centered, which looks great. But this one, I wanted it to be a little bit off and kind of poke it behind the tree. So I'm gonna just use some of my, whatever tape adhesive you have, and we're gonna center it. I like a little bit of an offset around it. So if you have an oval that does that, great. There we go. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is you would think it's to put the tree down, which it's not. First thing we're gonna do is grab some blank, black, painters or excuse me black twine now this is the fun stampers journey black twine it is my go-to twine they have two twines that are wax coated this one and a natural twine anytime i'm using a card where i i want to be very um specific where i put my twine i would use this twine because you can manipulate this twine and kind of bend it to your will we're also going to grab little strips of purple and i mean little like itty bitty strips of purple tape because we have to hide it behind the skinny little guy. So obviously Simon thinks little boys are always skinny. Well, guess what? In high school, I was not. You could put a lot of purple tape behind me, Sean. <laughs> you look skinny in your pictures. Oh, great. Thanks, Sean. You look skinny in your pictures. I don't know what happened after that. 
You still look skinny. I need, I need more of my mango You're still diet. Skinny. Mango diet peach. Or wait, no, what is this? Diet mango what? Diet mango. All right, guys. So we are going to, because this is going behind this little guy here. Can you zoom in a little? Mm-hmm. Since this is going behind this little guy, we're only going to be using um, three fingers to wrap this around. So what I do is I give myself a little lead of the, the, the head of the, the this, and then we're also going to grab the butt of it. And yes, that's the term I use. So you're going to wrap it around and until you have both the head and the butt still sticking out. And the reason why, Sean, why are we doing that? So you know where to put the ends in and keep oh them down. Oh my gosh! You guys, Sean really does listen to me. So we're going to grab the head here and we are going to use a little bit of purple tape. There we go. Grab another little piece of purple tape and we're going to put the butt. And now you can kind of play around with it a little bit and mess it up. Just remember though, we are going to need to hide it. So if you have anything too wild and you can't tape it down, it all has to be hidden right about here. So I'm just going to kind of move it around, move, move, move. There we go. Okay. So before we put the little boy on. Why wouldn't you use clear double-sided tape for it to hold down the twine? Because I'm messing this up. And if it was double-sided tape, even with that, it's going to flake off. And um, purple tape, if I need to remove this, let's say I don't like the way it is, I could lift up purple tape without it ripping my project. There you go, Carol. Okay, so this guy is gonna go down first. So this is the tree. The tree is gonna use a little bit of our black foam tape. Now, you do have to pay attention where this tree is going because of those creases. So we will put some tape here and down here, but there's a crease right here, so we don't need foam tape essentially there. So we're gonna do one section here and one towards the top to compensate for that little peak there. So Anne is asking, why do you put string behind them? I love that look. I don't know, someone did that a, look. a long time ago and I just love that chaotic kind of look to it. Um, I am not, like there's some people out there that make beautiful, classy, elegant cards. I'm not that person. I like kind of this messier, grungier looking of a card. I can make a pretty card, don't get me wrong. Oh yeah. Like Anna Griffin cards are gorgeous. Yep. I love her cards. They're detailed and ornate and I can make them. They're just not my jam to make on an ongoing basis. But people that do love them, like Michael mm -hmm. Crow makes beautiful yes, Anna Griffin cards yes, that are masculine. I yep. love them. Okay, so here we go. And every once in a while, I'll be in the mood for that kind of card, but this is my go-to. All right, so this guy is going to be raised up with two foam dots. And the reason why is we we are going to end up taking the fala la behind it and tucking it. And we want him to be raised up. So I'm going to grab, this is the Gina K um, foam dots. They come in a box where you can pull them out, but I don't, I don't use them. You kind of broke the box. I get rid of the box and use them this way because that box drives me freaking insane. So Renee R. asks, what about the wired twine? I love that stuff if you can find it. But I can't find it in multiple colors and I am too lazy to wrap it around stuff. So I use this. There is a transparent foam tape. Wow. Mm, hey, Missy. So we're going to have him up because the trees, you know, force perspective. There we go. He is singing to everyone that's walking by. Fa la 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 la. Last but not least, we're going to take the fa la 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 la. And it is going to go underneath him and underneath the tree a little bit, which means we're going to raise up the tree in the back here with another piece of foam square. Reminds them of pig pen. Yes. See, that's why. That was my intention the whole time. No, it wasn't, but that was a good idea. Sorry, I needed to add another piece of black foam tape behind here to give it a little more height, okay? So now this guy only needs... Single. A single. Wait. It doesn't need anything. See? Nine. 
Almost got me off my groove, Sean. Uh -huh. Got the Emperor off his groove. Very underrated Disney movie. It's great movie. The Emperor's New Groove. I don't think it got nearly the love it should have. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go. So, fa la 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 la. It looks like it's coming out of his mouth. That's why I wanted it a little bit. You can see in the original one, I did it more in the center, but I wanted it to have that appearance like it is coming out of his mouth. And we also want to raise up him a little bit more in his head. So I want to give him a little bit more back here. I'm going to put another foam square and this way it can attach to, I'll show you here. See there, there's his, the little foam square. We're going to attach it to the fa la 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 la. So it actually looks like he's way in front of it and it's coming out. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do here guys is add the sparkle to the tree, which this part's pretty easy. You are going to grab these two. The colors I have are um, copper and goldenrod. We're going to start with goldenrod, and we're going to basically skip each of the little dots. So I always start it off on a scratch piece of paper, so that way we know we have good flow. And we are going to start with each. Do you need me to move and zoom in, or you got it, Sean? Got it. I'm good? Yep. Perfect. So we're just going to go every other one gold and then go back with copper. And then don't pay too much close. I mean, you're going to get down here and you're going to be like, okay, which one goes with which? It doesn't matter. No matter. I mean, unless it really matters to you, then you can figure that out. You, you do like. you. You do you, boo. Can they still see? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I can get mega close. Now this here will take a while to dry. And when you pull up on stickles, make sure you pull up, not off to the side because it will trail where you go. So I make a dollop and pull straight up because once again, I'll show you over here. If you pull straight up, you get a dollop. If you pull off to the side, it's going to trail on you. So up. Does that make sense, Sean? Mm -hmm. Up. I do. Up. You go boop and up. Like a frosting of a cake. You know when they make the dollops on a cake? And if you do trail to a side where I just did right there, you're going to grab my favorite tool. Pokey pokey no jokey. Which is actually a cake tool. Um, you can get them on Amazon. I'll give you the link down below. But if you have a Tuesday morning, check there. They're $2.99 at Tuesday morning. Um, on Amazon, they're $6, and I don't know why. But I love this. This is not even a craft tool. It's like a sweet sugar bell. I think they, they use it to move the royal icing around. I love it. So I buy them every time I go to Tuesday morning. I always say, Sean, go find me my pokey tool. And yesterday, we went to go get one, and one of the ladies in the row, I get judged every time I go down the crafting aisle. It doesn't matter if I'm at Joanne's, Michael's. Tuesday morning, it's almost like, why are two guys coming down the crafting aisle? Okay, I have a clog right now. I'm going to show you how to clean a clog. Declog. Time to declog it. Good night, Renee. What? Renee is leaving. Bye, Renee. Do you know where my little pokey... I might have to use my pokey tool because I don't have any of my... Um, all I use to declog it is one of your... Um, they're like uh, floral pins. Mm -hmm. Get it? You couldn't find one? And I have a whole bunch, but I don't know where they're at. So we're just going to keep going. But anyways, we get judged every time we go down the aisle. People are like, why are guys in this aisle? It kind of drives me insane. No judging. Boys can crop too, right, Sean? Mm hmm What happened to my gold? Oh, here it is. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is the star... So the base of the star is where I'm using the copper right here. And then the top is gold. Ta-da! Ta-da! Yep, you have to make those sounds. Ta-da! All right, so here we go. Here's two cards. Now you'll notice on this one, 
Um, I went way heavier with the gold. This one, I did not put as much gold and I did more of the um, brownish color, whatever color that was. So here's the two colors I used. So you have and this color and this color. I did more of burnt, this burnt sienna. burnt sienna here first and then did the gold and it's not as reflective. Here I did more gold and less of the burnt sienna. And the reason I did that is I wanted the music notes to pop out at you. Where here you can see them, you just have to like, it's more, you know, a music sheet that's been walked on where this one is, the music notes are definitely, you know, so let it dry, obviously. This has got wet stickles on it. Um, this has been sitting for probably two hours and I can touch it now. Um, and you can see, I do like stickles because stickles are very um, reflective and catch your attention. You could use little gemstones or little um, stickers or something like that. Mm -hmm. do both. Goodbye, Sean. Come back. So there you guys are. What do you think? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Are you checked out? <laughs> no, I wanted to know the spelling of that. The spelling of that. So do you guys want to see some of the other stamps that I'm going to be creating with his? So this is his other set I'll be creating with, Mythical Mermaids. Look at that. How freaking cute. And then he also gave us this, which is a background, the... I don't know. Sea floor. Um, we have two stencils, one for the um, seashells, which is a layered one. So we'll show you how that works, where you can layer the stencils on top of each other. Mm -hmm. This is just a background stencil. He also has die cuts. So if you are someone that does not want to stamp and emboss or stamp in black, these are great. They yeah. are his images that are already stamped and have that perfect offset. Um, and that way you can just take them out of the package and color with them Neat. or use them like this. So we'll be creating with that. He also has his original sets. Um, I have a few of them. I don't have all of them, but they're all in the same kind of style. This, you know, like I said, sitting in class, coloring, you know, and stuff that, that I really like right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to say he got me back yeah. in my paper crafting group. Sweet. We like it. All right, Sean. Heidi says if you were in her store, she'd probably talk your ear off. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> what would we talk about? Whatever you want. All right, guys. So there you go. Um, once again, all of the links um, have either been given to you on Facebook or are in the comments. So if you do want the links and I don't get back to you right away, just look under other people's comments. All the links are there. Using the links helps support our channel. So thank you thank very much. Thank you so much. much. Um, a lot of people say, why don't you do paper crafting anymore and stuff? So a couple of reasons. Um, I have to be inspired. It's really hard for me if I am not into something to create something with it mm -hmm. or force myself. I'm miserable. You can tell it's not turn out good. But if I'm into something, I can pump it out like this and just have fun with it. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened with this card. Um, another reason is cards are really hard to do. You have to um, come up with the project photograph it, come up with the entire link list, which you guys can see down below. There was a ton of products used in this card. Get a, a thumbnail ready to go, have all the links ready to go. So they just take a little bit of a longer time. They do. And I will be honest, not a lot of people use our links, which is super sad. They'll watch the video and then just go to, let's say Cricut or Ranger on their own and buy it, which is completely up to them. But then it does influence what videos we make because time is money right now, huh, Shawnee? Especially sure. now that we have a 401k plan. Oh, Isn't yeah. that exciting? It is exciting. It's just another reason for you to stay an employee and be a good employee. Yes. And not get written up and fired. Nope. <laughs> just saying. All right, guys. So there is the cards. Look at them. They are super cute. Um, we'll probably have these go up for auction on our Watts of Love, which we're debating if we're going to do this weekend or next weekend. Sean just reminded me this weekend's Labor Day weekend, so it might so not be good. So who knows how many people are going to be actually home. So we might do it the next weekend. I don't yeah. know yet. I'll figure that out yeah. and let you know. We will be live tomorrow. We all have a Ken from the car during the day, and then at night we'll have a Chocolate Tour live project. And Thursday, be waiting for... If we do it the weekend, the following... So wait, for a second. That'd be the first... That... No, yeah, the other weekend we could not do it Sunday because we leave Sunday. For where? Oh, for Cameo yeah. release. Yeah. We would have we'll to do it that it Sunday. I'll figure it out. We do it during the week. Um, you got me off my curve. I know, sorry. 
10 from the car uh chocolate tour thursday we will be uploading some more videos we have about like 13 videos ready to go to upload so i hope you've been enjoying it so far mm -hmm. we've uploaded one around pixie spray we've uploaded one i think around our ryobi glue gun we have a lot more videos coming we have a ton sean did a camera review a glowforge review we have a lot mm -hmm. so it's awesome and this thing we have an archon, archon coming, coming next coming. so this hiring ryan has really sparked this guy to get up and move it i love it so thank you everyone for watching and sticking around thank you for using the links thank you for the support make sure um if you have crafty friends to share this video and Please. other than that i hope you guys have a great rest of your night mm -hmm. and we will see you live tomorrow thanks everyone bye, bye.